Hello, sir. Um, my name is Devon Thomas. Um, I helped uh, Menelik put uh, the story of Lovers Rock together and marketed it for him. And generally, I'm involved in culture, development of institutions and mechanisms to promote culture, people, African heritage around the world in the UK. And uh, I was privileged enough to see uh, this new one mile movie last year under the invitation of National Film Theatre. And uh, I found it tremendously informative and uh, entertaining. There was a lot of footage there from a particular time in one mile of life. I had not seen before um, and uh, wanted to give it my 100% support because any information about such a, a man who's played such an important role in our culture because he took uh, our local folk culture and internationalized it. He had a vision and a commitment that has contributed to, to, to Jamaica and its culture being known worldwide. I travel a lot. Um, last year I was in Turkey and uh, people asked me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Jamaica. He said, ah, you're Bamali. And uh, I generated this following, right, just through my association with the island and the culture, how he's promoted the culture, rejected the culture. And everywhere I went, Bob Marley music would just be put on to their systems and their shops. I'd go into clubs and I'd just they'd start playing uh, reggae music and Bob Marley in particular. And the last day I was there, it was like the whole of southwest Turkey was just surrounded with uh, Jamaican culture and Bob Marley music. So he's a tremendous uh, contributor to uh, Jamaica particularly, but the world. It's taken our culture to the world, it's made people aware that um, our connection is with Africa, and that Africa is a source of humanity, and that people are people. We have to live together, um, you know, one love. That was voted uh, the best uh, popular song in Britain. Um, so that tells you, I mean, I think Marley obviously was tremendously influenced by the place he came from. Because if you look how Usain Bolt carries himself, why is he such an icon himself? Why does running fast and other music capture the imagination of the world? So there's something about Jamaica and how it influences its people and how they in turn influence the world. That's very special. Um, he influenced me when I was very young. I was listening to him a long time before he was an international star when he was playing Skia, you know, and he was. Um, I'm a, a music man myself, you know, I've DJ for the last 50 years. Um, and so, um, cool down, and there's those uh, Coxon influenced early songs. Expl you know, express the potential. But he had to work very hard for the next few years to take it to different levels with Lee Scratch Perry and then with uh, uh, Ireland and, and, and Chris Blackwell. And, uh, you know, he's done a tremendous amount. I, you know, I agree that, you know, it's tremendous as well with my brother. And, and Devon, could you, could you tell us a bit about the significance of Jamaican 50 years independence and yes. if we, is, as we Jamaicans, as you feel were, yes. are feeling better now than 50 yes. years ago? Yes. Now, it seems like a blink of an eye to me. I remember the evening of Jamaican Independence Evening. My parents were active in the Garvey movement in the 30s. My father was a founder member of the Jamaica Railway Workers Trade Union. They in turn were founders of the People's National Party. My father was Norman Washington Manley's bodyguard. So I grew up in an activist environment, in a home where politics and activism were like second nature. Um, and they fought for Jamaican independence. It's not something that the English or the British handed to us uh, benignly and said, let us go. We had to fight for it. There was uprisings in Jamaica in the 30s against wages, against laws to stop us from joining trade unions. So I know how we came to arrive at independence. And in the 50 years since independence, we've been able to realize some of our potential. Uh, I remember the material state of Jamaican society in those days. I left to come here around that time. Um, and I've kept 
closely linked with both places. And uh, to sit here on the river, right, this was the heart of where slavery emanated from. This is the apex of the triangle. Greenwich Mean Time, Britain was so powerful it was able to define where time and space was measured from, where longitude and latitude was measured from, right? And we, as the people, our labour, gave them the wealth to be able to do all those things, right? And we've overcome being enslaved, being colonialised, uh, being oppressed, until now we're some of the most dynamic and well-known people where people are aspiring in Japan, in Russia. I went to Poland, right, and they said, what, what, and they're talking to me in Padua, right, in Warsaw, right, because Mamali's music had inspired, you know, the solidarity and their unions in, in Poland. Um, in New Zealand, I'm sure you've seen that footage of Mali down there with the native Maori people, and in Australia, they identified with his lyrics and what, how that contributed to encouraging them. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, in South Africa, right, um, Madiba Mandela has talked about the impact of Jamaican culture, right, in the South African struggle. So we played our part in the struggle. Mali's contributed to it. Jamaica is a small uh, place in the Caribbean that's had a disproportionate impact on international culture. And I'm interested to see how the next 50 years are going to pan out because if we had this impact starting from such uh, a modest beginning, uh, you know, the whole, they said that there were 23 million people in the UK watching Usain's uh, final last night. Imagine that. The most viewed uh, uh, event in world affairs in history. Right? Because if you extrapolate from the UK around the world, more people were focused on this one event and this one personality we mean in Jamaica than anything else in the world at that moment. So it's a very sweet 50 years of anniversary. Please. Toast it with some rare nephew.